Mailbag time, we've got a few things in here, a couple of interesting, unusual things, so let's get stuck into it. So I think I know what's in this box. There's a wire in there. Okay. Ah, right. This isn't what I thought it was. It's something better. It's actually part of a repair I'm going to be doing in the future. I'll do a little repair video on something. I've already recorded some footage for it. I think I have anyway. So these are speakers for something. Hopefully, they're alright. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. You have to watch more videos to find out what this is about. You have to excuse the mess on the back of my desk here. I've got so much stuff going on at once, so it's just getting a bit messy. Things I want to do and things I haven't got the chance to do yet. This is just a couple of ESP32 modules. These are different to the ones I've got already. So it's the, uh, it's the Room 32U. And it's got the UFL connection on it, that's why it's called DU, I think. All the other ones I've got, I've got built-in antennas. But I did a project recently and it used Wi-Fi as a basis and it's something which just turns on once a day. It's just a little battery-powered device. But the range on the Wi-Fi is being problematic, it's only just good enough. So I thought I'd get some of these. It's basically the same modules I've already got, but it's got the UFL connections on it, which means I can put an external antenna on it and hopefully increase the Wi-Fi range. Because right now it's just borderline. It's literally, I don't know, probably 4 dB short of actually dropping off the network. It's that close. It's only barely on. If I stand in the way of it, it doesn't work. Give it <laughs> only, okay, yeah, I'm a bit fat, but you know, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's what those are for. Ah, excellent. Right. I ordered this thing nearly three months ago. It took ages to get here. Tiny SA. So I already actually have a similar unit to this. Yeah, I've already got a Tiny SA and I've also got a VNA version as well. I've shown them previously in my bags. This has got a bigger screen. This is like a newer version, higher frequency version. It's got two bands up to 800 megahertz and up to 5.3 gigahertz. Has a USB-C charging port. Controls just like the other unit. Has it got any power? It does have power, even though it took ages to get here. Excellent. And the battery is uh, about 4 volts. That's doing alright still then. There you go. It's basically a little spectrum analyzer. And um, I use these out in the field for things. All the presets are empty. That's fine. I need to set this up. Preset everything the way I want to use it and play with the settings and configure it how I want to use it and uh, yeah, it'd be good. So it's got a higher frequency range, it's got a bigger screen which could be helpful too. I just want to see if this compares well to my existing one which has got the smaller screen to um, play with later on. There'll be links for this in down below. And underneath here, what else have we got in here? So we've got a fixed antenna, we've got a connector, charging cable, hand strap with a little stylus thing and a couple of wires to do hookups with so okay so yeah I'll play it later on that should be interesting yeah I basically need to verify something because my existing small one when I'm looking at some lower channels on some devices I've built three megahertz or two megahertz away I can't remember now I think it's two megahertz away yeah so you got the primary transmit channel let's say you're on 868 megahertz exactly right two megahertz above that I'm seeing a ghost image of you know it could be 870 megahertz exactly 2 megahertz above. Now I don't know if it's a IF issue on the existing unit I've got or whether it is the law really is doing that. I thought I'd get one of these to use in the field and hopefully it'll give me some different results. I don't know. I'll find out. So you probably saw the mixing review I did not too long ago, I don't know, probably a month ago by the time you see this video. I reviewed the Mixig um, TO3004 300 megahertz portable oscilloscope. If you haven't seen that video, go and check out my reviews playlist that's in there. 
it's also well it's in reviews and it's also in the uh, oscilloscopes reviews as well i've got it in a couple of playlists anyway it didn't come with a bag it would have been nice if it came with a bag and it's as a portable scope you do kind of need to have it in something to protect it and i found this on aliexpress i thought well it's got the mexican branding on it how relevant it is on the know, but it's just a bag really but um i thought this might be good because it looks like it's about the right size i mean it is potentially for the right thing and so the scope can slip in here it's got velcro adjustments in here so i can adjust the sizing now i'll take the scope and obviously got a side pocket where i can put the probes and stuff in there it's a shoulder holster thing so i'll chuck a link in down below for this as well so if you've got one of these little mig sig portable scopes you might want a bag for it with the right name on it you could just use any bag of course but why not have one with the name on join all the cool kids all right let's find out what's in here in fact i think i already know um interesting packaging but that's okay it's already half done really Okay, so my car has had an issue recently with the air conditioning system and I've actually been doing some video on it, I was thinking it was the actual control system like the actual, uh, it's called the AC amplifier which controls most of the system basically, it's like the brain of it all, I was thinking it may be that, but I'm not completely sure because I pulled the thing apart, I've done a video on it, well I've recorded a video on it, you will see it at some point, where I put it apart, test all the componentry inside it and just see if I can see anything wrong with it and I can't find anything wrong with the AC amplifier module it seems fine from what I can test on my bench right you know checking components and checking for shorts and opens and stuff like that there's two potential errors so the diagnostics on the actual car is like a thing where the heater doesn't turn on and just flashes a light for I don't know 30 seconds to a minute something like that and then it will come on and the heater controls and air conditioning everything will work. I mean, when I actually initially had this problem, it all worked absolutely perfectly. And the air conditioning was working, it was calling that sort of stuff. It seemed like it was just being funny. So I, I thought, well, it can't be the gas thing because it's, it is cooling. Anyway, after I did the AC amplifier, dug all that apart and basically ruled out that as being an obvious fault anyway. This past week, suddenly the air conditioning isn't keeping up so well so now I'm thinking maybe it is a gas problem so I found these locally R134A gas, this is what's in the car and this little kit here which is just like a hose, this is like a really cheap one this is like a, just a top up thing and you hook this up to your lines on the car you've got this attachment which goes into the gas can this pierces the can, although it's not exactly the right one it seems so this has got a threaded outside, it's got threaded inside, that's interesting that kind of just latches on I think. I think it's a case of use it or, or yeah, once you pierced it you have to use it. Interesting. But this is cheap, right? This is like 30 bucks for one of these and then it's all like another 30 bucks you bought two. You only got one of these but it's effectively you're paying more. I don't know. Um, anyway, whatever. I thought well, I'll get this. I'll put some of this gas in. Just top it up a little bit. I'm not going to use the whole can. I've got two cans just in case I mess it up or something. I'll try that. I've also got some more stuff coming from China. I've actually got like a proper gauge set for it so you can actually see what the, the pressures are in the AC system and some dye as well for checking leaks and that sort of stuff and injector and all, what have you. I, the only thing I don't have coming is a vacuum pump. I'm thinking I might get one. I've also got some more gas coming too so hopefully it all turns up but that would be better then because I can check the actual pressures in the air conditioning system and know what's going on. This is just blindly putting some in to see if it fixes my fault. It may or may not. Anyway, check out the videos down below. Subscribe here if you want to subscribe, click the bell icon as well. And over here's a Patreon support link if you want to help support the channel and help me to buy gas in my car apparently. Just love it.